Greetings and salutations, everybody. Welcome back once again to the Farts and Graps show, where today, as per usual, I'm going to be your host for this video, Danjo McGraps, and we have some epic freaking music. This is part 55, if you guys can believe it. I think it's 55. <laughs> um, and yeah, so last time we got Judith back. She's, uh, she's sleeping right here. Uh, we are flying in a boat. We have, like, a legit airship situation going on. And I'm gonna talk to Estelle, because apparently I haven't done that yet oh, and I need to. Yuri. Sorry to interrupt while you were thinking. Yeah, um, I know. You should... <laughs> you could literally say that to anybody at any time and be correct but yeah ever since I took Bellius's life without meaning to I've wanted to know what it means to be the child of the full moon so the same thing doesn't happen again I've always thought that it was my duty to know but after what happened to Bellius that's how everyone is they do something they learn they do something else they learn more you too Yuri yeah. Maybe if I had known everything ahead of time, I wouldn't have made any mistakes. <laughs> There's only one thing I can say for sure. What's that? Maybe you wouldn't have made any mistakes, but it sure would have been boring. I really wonder. It's like, yeah, do you really, do you really think I'm boring, Yuri? That, that's kind of really hurtful. Um, but yeah, so, uh, also, guys, I, um, you may remember a couple episodes ago, I believe it was actually part 50, um, I kind of talked about, um, how I changed around my recording settings. And, uh, I think this is another one of those situations where I gotta talk to everybody. Um, yeah, so I changed around my recording settings because, uh, at least on my display, at least for North American, uh, PlayStation 4 Pros. They output 59.94 frames per second, which is an NTSC standard, which is old. Uh, it doesn't, it's kind of a relic of the bygone age for American broadcasting television. Uh, and, um, but it works. It's uh, compatible with like Pretty much every TV out there, uh, any 60 hertz display, essentially, um, and it, um, so I was talking about recording in 59.94 frames per second, uh, as my, um, input and output settings, which essentially would cause less signal degradation um if YouTube um accepted the format basically because I couldn't do it with mp4 a uh, video container format uh so I was using mkv um and the other reason I was using mkv is because sorry about those little pops um mkv is less corruptible so you have a greater chance of keeping the footage that you record um, even if something goes wrong and they miscarry a one or a zero or some shit um, so yeah I uploaded that um, and a weird side note uh, Windows 10 didn't really know 
what the details were for those video files. Like I pulled up just just out of curiosity. Um, I checked like the properties for the video file and usually go to details, especially if it's MP4, and it'll tell you um, the like the video and audio codec, the FPS, the um, resolution. Just like all the stuff, I can tell about it. Um, and I believe MP4 is kind of easier for Windows to read because it is, uh, I believe, FFmpeg, which is an old, old, old thing that uh, Microsoft has just kind of... Actually, I don't know if it's a Microsoft thing. I think they bought it. I think they started it. I don't remember. Um, essentially, uh, they've just iterated upon it over and over again. And, uh, whoever actually made it, sorry, uh, it's probably not Microsoft, but it might be, I don't know. Anyways, um, so I uploaded that, uh, for the last few videos, episodes of this series. Um, because I'm doing Breath of the Wild, which is easier because the Switch outputs a even 60. Um, the rendering resolution in frames per second and all that could be different. But as far as video signal data goes... Um, yeah, you just pick your resolution and output 60 FPS. It's pretty easy to capture, pretty straightforward. Um, and so, yeah, after I uploaded that, because that's, you know, I wanted to know how to improve um, my recordings off of my PS4 Pro, and I thought, well, this should be an improvement. Um, and not just my PS4 Pro, like my Wii U, um, a couple other of my system, the other uh, consoles. Um, most of them output 59.94 because it's that NTSC format. And YouTube did not detect it as 60 FPS. In fact, they processed it for 30 frames per second because I guess automatically it was like, well, this isn't 60. And I was like, and it made it more choppy, so I'm I'm really sorry about that, guys. Um, I really didn't want that. But at the same time, I couldn't, like, go back to a previous save file and, like, replay and re-record and all that stuff. Um, and unless you're, like, watching on a bigger display, um, like, if you're watching on, like, your Xbox or your PS4 or your PC or something, it probably wasn't noticeable, like, hugely. Unless you're somebody like me, who, whenever you watch a YouTube video, you're just half the time out of curiosity, pull up the stats for nerds and see, um, you know, what's actually going on. Um, so yeah, sorry about that, I didn't... That was, like, the least optimal outcome. The odd thing is, is that when I was streaming in that format on Twitch, uh, Twitch detected it just fine. Like, they were like, oh, it's 72060, and it's scalable. Um, you can watch in 480 or 360 or 240 if your internet is, you know, not very good. I thought, man... Why can't you just do the quick conversion there, YouTube? Like, come on. Come on, guys. It's it's 60 FPS. It's pretty much the same thing. It's 0 .06 frames per second different. Uh, which I believe is every 18 frames, there would be a drop frame. I suppose. But... 
I'm guessing it was because it's MKV. And I wonder maybe if I like converted the MKV video format to an MP4, it wouldn't have done that. I don't know. Um, so I actually reverted back to my old way of recording my PS4 Pro um, because those recordings were turning out pretty good. Um, again, my Elgato is kind of to blame for the inconsistent video quality. Um, when possible, I am going to upgrade to a newer um, video capture device, but until then, um, just if you guys could just bear with me a little bit. Um, and I will do my best to make sure I can bring you guys the best audio and video quality experience that I possibly can right now with my current hardware. Um, cause yeah, it's, uh, you know, 2020 has been rough. It's been a rough year. Um, especially for finances and stuff. So I'm not going to say like, help us get a better video card guys, go to Patreon and no, I know finances are tight pretty much everywhere. Um, Unless, like, you're part of, like, the 1% of the population of the world that actually is totally fine and has expendable income right now. Um, even people that are more successful on their online platforms and they've made it into a business aren't throwing money around. Um, because hopefully they want to make sure their employees are okay, you know? Um, and I totally respect that. I'm not going to be like, oh, well, this channel has a million subscribers, so they should be totally fine, and they could they could check this out and, like, donate to the cause, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, yeah, okay, possibly, but they have friends and family of their own, you know? Like, they have their own concerns, they have their own employees. Um, so there's always, like, the other side of it, like, we're not a business, per se. Um, I don't have employees. I have friends that are mutually on board with, like, where we're at with the channel. I provide them with updates, like, all the time. I'm like, hey, we're at this, we're at this. Um, you know, we're not monetized yet, but I'll let you know when we are. Um, and speaking of which, guys, we recently broke 800 subscribers. Uh, we have the watch time, I think, that we need. Um, I'm, we might need a little bit more, but I think we're actually there. Because um, I have a lot of my older videos I get, like, in, like, streams and stuff like that. People that marathon it and, um, you know, if they want to, and cool. Like, for the amount of views that we consistently get, it's kind of disproportionate to the amount of watch time that we get, which I'm very flattered by. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm just hoping as it goes forward, like, it'll just get there, you know? Um, or maybe YouTube will even, uh, I mean, I doubt they're gonna change their, like, uh, like, make their requirements more lenient. I really doubt that. Um, because it used to be, and then they made it harder to get your channel monetized. So, if it was the old rules, we would have been monetized by now, but... I guess they made it a little bit harder, just because maybe they didn't want... I don't, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend to know what they do on their business end and why and all that shit. Um, but yeah, so, uh, sorry to go off on a little bit of a rant, it's still quite warm in here, and um, yeah, so that's the long and short of it. Um, we will do our best 
here at the Farts and Crap Show to make quality videos for you guys. Um, because honestly, I, I want it to be something that you guys enjoy. And I want to be um, making quality stuff and uh, presenting those experiences in a very uh, pleasant way. So, um, basically making sure I'm narrating things well, um, making sure the videos look good and representative of, well, what I'm looking at when I'm playing, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, just audio engineering and video production and all that stuff has been something that I've been learning over the past three years. Um, I knew it was going to be an uphill battle because I haven't, you know, gone to film school or been trained or instructed by anybody else. It's just my own experimentation and uh, learning what works and what doesn't and, you know, picking up little things along the way. Um, and so I'm always learning and... Um, And all the support from everybody that has been, like, leaving comments and, uh, liking the videos and all that. Like, thank you guys so much. You, your support, your, like, kind words have seriously been, like, my light in the darkness these past few months. And, uh, it's helped me stay motivated to keep pushing forward keep on that grind and uh, just really like reaching out because I mean there are lots of people out there um, that just don't um, what's a good way to, um, what's a good way to put this um, They don't hear about things due to the YouTube algorithm. Like, it's kind of terrible. And I, I know, it's just another YouTuber bitching about the algorithm. But seriously, I am very baffled sometimes about the stuff that YouTube uh, suggests to me. It's like, here's your suggestions. And I'm like, I don't want to watch any of this crap. Like, seriously, just, um, no. You know what I mean? Uh, like, there's the easy ones, you know, where it's like, um, like I'm a big game, gr I'm a big Game Grumps fan. I've been watching them for before, since before Dan came on the show. So like years and years now. Um, and same with like uh, Gerard over at the Completionist and uh, the Super Beer Bros. I love those guys. Um, anytime they come up on a video, like, on my suggestions, I'm just like, yep, you're right, YouTube, I watch pretty much every new video that comes along from these guys. So thank you for doing that, because, uh, yeah, I appreciate that, because consistently I watch those. Um, and it's just, it's been very busy, um, it's like... I've been running into this wall recently of like not having enough hours in the day and I'm just like man I want to check out all this stuff I want to like really connect on a lot of these like other channels that I really like what they're doing uh, and I think they have a very solid model and I've seen some of them like basically go from like not monetized to monetized and like actually like growing pretty dang well and I'm just like wow I just want this for my channel and just like man I if you guys knew how much I idolize you it's it's a lot just like those small youtubers that are like making it now and it's just like wow I so thank you guys. Uh, not only are you guys my heroes, 
uh, in a very real sense. Um, I'm also rest assured I'm not trying to emulate you. Like everybody has their style. Mine is my own, you know. Um, like Danjo, got to be Danjo, you know. Because if I tried to do something else, it would just be. It wouldn't be good. And I'm not going to try to, like, copy somebody else's shit. Um. So, yeah. Of course, if a game is popular and we happen to both be playing the same game on stream or something, that's just because I love the game, okay? <laughs> There's a lot of that going on. Like, oh man, you're playing this? Oh, I'm playing this. They're like, oh, well, I've been playing this since it came out. I'm like, uh huh. Me too. I love this series, you know? It's like our mutual love for something, like, we're not stepping on each other's toes, you know? Um, like, you have your own style, and people that like that style will keep coming back, you know? Um, and that was hard for me to accept early on because I'm like, I'm not special, what the fuck? Like, I'm not cool, like, I'm not that funny. Um, I mean, even though Jade says I'm hilarious and like, I, I kind of, I believe her to an extent, um, and there are times when I know, like, oh man, this is really funny. Uh, <laughs> but, like, the fact that just accepting that, like, man, like, people actually want to show their support, or they actually want to, like, stop by for a stream, or they actually want to, like, stop by and check out this video. Or, like, uh, the first time I heard somebody, uh, tell me, is like, Oh yeah, I like to put your streams on for, uh, for my, for my dogs when I go out of the house sometimes. So, I hope you're not, like, telling them to fuck up my couches and shit like that. I'm just like, oh my goodness. Somebody that doesn't know me at all just knows my content on the internet, and they're, like, putting me on for their pets. Thank you. And it was a good boy. You were a good boy, yes you are. Or who's a pretty little kitty? Yeah. You're a pretty little kitty. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, guys. Um, so yeah, thanks for stopping by. This has been the Farts and Crap Show. I'm just kidding. We're going to actually play the game. <laughs> Sorry for ranting for like 20 minutes. Uh... But yeah, that's the TLDR of the whole thing, which I should have put at the beginning, but I didn't know how much I was going to rant. A, thank you guys for supporting us. Uh, we will continue to put out videos every day. Uh, keep our series going until we beat these games. Start new games. Rinse and repeat. Uh, archiving streams. Doing everything we can. Trying to connect with you on Twitter. Uh, over on Twitch. Um, we're trying to revive, like, we're talking about maybe reviving our Instagram, I don't know, Jade is gonna, she's been in charge of that, but she hasn't really felt like doing social media, so, like, we might not do that, but, um, yeah, guys, we, you know, like, um, I also check the Discord every day if you guys want to join in there and talk about Pokemon, random games, random memes, um, or just if you want all the updates for this channel, um, that's, that's where we do it. That and Twitter, but that's mostly just for, like, as far as updates go, though, like, uh, when we go live. Like, I make sure a tweet goes out anytime I start a broadcast, that sort of thing. But, um, that and, uh, yeah, we're gonna just be doing the old quick and easy, um, recording method to make sure it is 60 FPS because that's been the lowest signal degradation method possible until I get that new capture card 
Uh, if you have a suggestion for a capture card, put it in the comments. I kind of already have one picked out, but um, curious what you guys think. Uh, and no, I do not have a spare PCIe slot, so don't ask. Um, so I'm going to have to go with an external one. Just, just saying. And that's pretty much it, so let's talk to Carol, see what's up. Are you thinking about Judy? Yeah. I'm wondering what we should do about her. It's true that she broke the guild's laws and betrayed us. I always thought that a guild's strict adherence to its own laws was what kept it together. That there could be no exceptions. No lenience for those who would break the laws. But... She did what she did to save the world. Judy is destroying Blastia because she knows it's the right thing to do. Even if it makes people hate her. Yep. Judith didn't break our laws in order to do something bad. I know this now. I'm gonna talk with her about it and give it some more thought. I'll figure this out eventually. Oh yeah? Maybe if I become a little more decisive, Nan will listen to me, too. Is he still holding a candle for Nan? Like, how? I don't think Nan is going to listen to you, Carol. I'm pretty damn sure she's not... she doesn't care. Alright, Raven, what's up, my dude? My dude. So does an old man past his prime fit into the picture at all? Yeah. Why do you gotta make it weird, man? <laughs> what are you whining about, old man? Why are you past your prime? Hmm. What Judith was talking about before. Hermes Blastia, was it? Blastia created with techniques that should have been lost in the war are still active. Do you know what this means? I guess someone who survived the war brought either Blastia or those techniques back with him. If that person was still using the Blastia even though he knew it was harmful to the Earth, someone like that would have to be quite the villain indeed. Oh man, don't tell me you... Hey now, yours truly was nothing but an innocent youth on the straight and narrow back then. I wouldn't do something like that even on my worst day. <laughs> I was just trying to trick you into giving yourself away. You're a slippery one. Son of a... When are you gonna learn some respect for your elders? I still think... I still think that's really funny. Because... I know I've said this before, but, um... Raven is, like, 30... 2, 30... 1... Something like that. He's not that old. Like, he's a little... He's a little old, comparatively. Um... Because Carol's, like, 12 or some shit. I'm... Yuri is, like, 17. Uh... I don't remember how old Estelle is. Or Patty. She's, like, 9 or 10 or something. Judith is Critian, so who knows how old she is. She could be like 300. Um, and Rita is like 15, and Rapide... I don't actually know. I don't think they've ever clarified it. But uh, yeah, Patty's the only one I haven't talked to yet, so... I... Actually, wait, maybe Rita... Have I talked to Rita? When I go back in the lower deck, I'm gonna talk to Rita and repeat and see what's up with them. Don't fall overboard. Oh, I'll be careful. Yuri, the world sure is big. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, even though we're flying this high in the air, we still can't see everything. If the world's this big... I guess it makes sense that there'd be so many things we don't know. It might not make that much of a difference whether I get my memories back or not. Are you saying you'd be okay with not getting them back? 
I'm saying that I'm not the only one who feels restless and anxious not knowing the truth. Everyone's worried about something, even you and Estelle. You think so? Isn't that why everyone's here? Isn't that why Judy came back? And is that why you're here too? I don't want to be alone. You know, you're being pretty honest today. I'm always honest. Really? Well, maybe you are. That's... Yuri, come on, don't, don't doubt her honesty. She's... Yeah. You know, unless, like, she really does have all her memories and she's just, like, playing it up. Uh, but yeah, let's talk to Rita and repeat and then, I guess, take the top bunk. Or one of the top bunks? Yeah, there's three bunks. Oh yeah, I think I talked to Rita at the end of the last episode. <laughs> Thank you. Woof. Uh... I don't want to talk, I want to sleep. Wait, that's what... that's what Yuri said. So let her sleep a bit longer, right. Oh, I had to talk to Judith. Oh my gosh. Morning, Yuri. You know, I have a different rant. Uh, it's a short one. I'll just I'll hold on to it for a sec. Morning. It's a beautiful morning, but even as we stand here, the air is out of balance. And our world may already be dying. <laughs> That's right. Judy! Well, look who's feeling better. In the past, these slight fluctuations of the air have not negatively affected our world. There have always been beings who maintain the balance by sensing changes in the airflow. Beings like Pharaoh and Ba'ul, the Entelechaea. So the Entelechaea were responsible for keeping the air balanced. For ages, the Entelechaea have regulated the air. But the recent increase has been greater than they could control. Which is being caused by the Hermes Blastia. And which is also why you were going around taking down as many of them as you could. Yes, that was my mission. The path I walk with Ba'ul, to whom I owe my life. The path you walk. Now some would even hunt the Intelikea for Apatheia. This has made the mission of the Intelikea even more difficult. Why is everybody so crazy about these Apatheia anyway? I'm afraid I don't have an answer. The air an Intelikea absorbs becomes condensed within its body over time. When its life is at an end, that condensed air forms a crystal, an Apatheia. That's all I know. I imagine Pharaoh could shed more light on the subject, though. So Epithea are crystals of concentrated air. If that's true and the energy could be extracted from the Epithea, it would be a source of overwhelming power, I'm sure. Could we really do that? I... I don't know. But if that's possible, there must be tons of guys who want those things. I bet somebody wants to use these things for the wrong reasons. Why didn't you just tell us all this from the beginning? Seriously, we could have avoided all this trouble if you just talked to us. Am I wrong? Even if you had known, there are things not even you could have prevented. What do you mean? I showed up at Heliord because Ba'ul had sensed a disturbance in the air. Where there was a disturbance, there was sure to be a Hermes Blastia. But what I found there was not a Blastia, it was a person. That had never happened before. So it wasn't like you were looking for Estelle in particular back at Heliard. Yet for some reason, Ba'ul perceived Estelle as a disturbance in the air. I had to find out why. For the sake of the path I've chosen, it was at that time that Pharaoh first appeared. He seemed to have some idea who Estelle was. My mission was to destroy all the Hermes Blastia. 
However, Estelle was obviously not a Blastia. I needed to make absolutely certain. I made a deal with Pharaoh, and he agreed to grant me some time. You mean... If it became apparent that her existence posed too great a threat, then I... I would kill her. You what?! Wait! Rita! Settle down. Obviously Judith reached a different conclusion. All right, I get it. Bellius said you possess a heart of compassion. If you can communicate that to Pharaoh somehow, you may learn what you should do. Hey! There's no real reason for you to fight Pharaoh anymore, right? I mean, we know the Hermes Blastia are what's causing the problem and everything. If we just make sure the Apatheia don't fall into the wrong hands... I still want to meet Pharaoh. I want to hear what he has to tell me. But... Please try to understand. I have to know more about myself and take responsibility for who I am. All right. Sorry, Yuri. I don't think we can decide what to do about Judith right away. I promise not to leave again until things have been settled, as you said. I need to accept that responsibility myself. Let's go and find Pharaoh. We'll finally be getting around to one of the first things we set out to do. One of... Just to clarify... There were still a bunch of things that Estelle uh, basically hired us to do as a potential heir to the throne. I have a feeling by the end of the story she is not going to be considered for that role. But I don't really know. And I'm not going to get into the rant that I was going to segue into just yet. We can work out the rest once this is finished. There is a rocky crag in the center of the sands of Kogor. That is where Pharaoh lives. Baul can take us there. Okay, let's go. This meeting's been a long time coming. And... see... nope. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I can communicate with Baul, but there are still a few things you should know. Like what? Baul can only land on the ground in wide, open spaces. Oh, dude. Dude, 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 dude. So we're keeping this configuration? Like, we just have the airship now? Oh, please tell me. Please, please tell me. So you won't be able to dismount on steep mountain ranges or in narrow canyons. Oh, yes, yes. Can't he land on water? Water's no good either. Even though we're a boat. Really? He looks like he'd be a good swimmer. Well, he's directly above us, so it would crush the boat. <laughs> yeah, he'd sink like a rock. Huh, who knew? But that's why we have a ship, right? Right. If you'd like to get down onto the ocean, let me know. Baul will set our ship down there for us. Okay, but what should we do when we want to fly again? Also, if we can fly, why would we change into the ship mode? Use Baul's horn to call him to you. Ah. Baul's... that's all there is to it? Every Intelikea has a special region in its brain that can be used for communication with a special power Critians possess. Huh. So we can get a hold of him by using that. Right. Nice. Press L3 to call Bale on the world map. Nice. We can just call the airship wherever we are. I love it. Oh, yeah. Move Bowel, call Bowel, or land on land or ship. Okay, L3. Our control camera. Please rotate camera towards north land. Only an area where landing is permitted. Toggle navigation map. Bring up main menu. Okay, so those are the same. So you hit cancel the land, essentially. 
you can also use the camera with L1 and R1. Uh, you can also do forward and backward with L2 and R2. Start with options. Or pause it. Yeah, the options start. Same thing. Uh, start skate with the touchpad. Okay, cool. So it's pretty much the same. So are we just going to call the ship Baul from now on? Oh, dope. Dope. Oh, this is so fucking awesome. Like every other JRPG, eat your fucking heart out. Best airship ever. Like the high wind from Final Fantasy VII? Psh, fuck no. The fucking, uh... The red rose from Final Fantasy IX? Psh, forget about it. The fucking... Wait, climb down. Climb down what? What? The... Oh, to like stop at this area? Oh no, they changed where at the top. Oh no, 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 no. No, no, no. 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 Oh, damn it. So they changed how to do the touchpad. Whoops. Okay, you can shift the camera down. Um. Oh no. Oh, this is terrible. There must still be a way to do it. Okay, so I'm using my uh, my PDP fight pad with my adapter. Um, and since the firmware update, I guess they changed how to do the touchpad functionality. Um, you know, I actually have a picture loaded up. Um, I will show you guys in, uh, here, I'll just show you guys in the video, um, here, so it's, uh, it's this, and I don't think it says, I gotta zoom in on this shit, uh, let's see, so Press emulation, Switch Pro Controller, PS4 Controller, Wii U Pro Controller, uh... It's not a Wii U Pro Controller, though. So it used to be you hold minus... and press R. It says select an R and turn left and press R3? Uh, um, Judith, you're oh, familiar there with Pharaoh, aren't you? Is he really as scary as he seems? Well, let's see. Sometimes he's logical, sometimes he's emotional. He can be really scary or really kind. All right, that didn't help very much. One thing's certain, his power is extraordinary, even among the Intellikea. Here's hoping we don't wind up looking like poor old Mount Temza the moment we meet him. If he can do that to a mountain, there wouldn't be anything left if he turned on us. I wish you wouldn't joke about scary things like that. Why should we get scared before we even get there? Especially if he's that strong. Wish I could take it as lightly as you and Yuri. Okay. Alright, so yeah, they just added, like, a, a button press to it, essentially. It's the same for the Wii, um, classic controller as it is for the Wii U Pro controller. Okay, so I think that's just because I'm at, 
a location. Oh, uh, that's not what I wanted. Uh, L3 is this one? Okay, good. Uh, so I kind of like this camera angle better. This is kind of like, it feels like it's too far zoomed out, you know? Just to kind of be able to look around like this is feels more natural. Um, so yeah, it used to be just hold minus. Which uh, essentially was uh, select. Like with the old start and select on the Wii, they changed it to plus and minus. Um, so it used to be a hold minus and press R. Um, and then also that same combination of holding minus and pressing R... ZR, uh, which essentially is R2, um, was for clicking the right stick, essentially. It does R3 on the PS4. Um, so like if I was to do that, that's to fix it north, right? So what they're saying is for the touchpad, you hold minus and then hit R and then R and then ZR. I never imagined you'd be able to speak with the Entelikea. Well, I use a Critian technique to do it. Wait, do I detect a little jealousy? Mm, maybe. Right, Repeat? <clears throat> Yuri, you want to talk to Repeat? I think the two of you understand each other well enough already. I got him pretty well figured out, but I don't know if he understands me. I think he feels the same way. <laughs> that was really great. Okay, so climb down, I guess, um, is just to have Bowel drop me off. The only thing I don't like about this camera angle is I can't see under me. Which is kind of a pain. So if I hit circle... Oh, I can't land. Wait, I thought circle was to land in, like, open spaces and shit. Isn't that what they said? That is what they said, right? It's clearly X. Okay, big open spaces. No. Yeah, I think they're talking about this place right here. Oh, you can just choose to enter. Oh, that's cool. I like it. That is what they said, though, right? Can I... Wait, can I save anywhere now? Oh, seriously? I still have to hit a checkpoint? I can't just, like, save on the world map? Uh, yeah, okay, fine. Pharaoh? Bellius? Baal? What sort of beings are Antelikea anyway? They are the oldest intelligent life forms on Terra rays. So, they aren't monsters? They aren't. It's said that they have a higher level of awareness than humans, though they don't have a civilization. Shiver me timbers! The Entelikea were smart! The reports we get from Baul are pretty accurate. He's a smart boy. <laughs> Okay, first off, sometimes the skit volume is, like, way too low. It's at the maximum, though, which is weird. I mean, I could turn the BGM down, but then sometimes it's going to be too quiet. I'll just turn it down a little, like, just by one. Uh, oh, we've been on normal? Really? Wow, I was getting my ass kicked on normal. Jeez. 
Um, probably because I haven't been grinding. These games, typically in Tales of Games, they kind of expect a little bit of grinding sometimes. Um... Okay, so where is it again? It's in library. Uh, collector book, monster book, battle book. Is it the collector book? No, it's not right. It's definitely not the monster book. That's the uh, bestiary, essentially. Oh, it's the battle book. Okay. Um. Yeah, different combinations, assign arts, normal attack, guard, changing targets, combo, uh, follow up a normal attack, circle for base art, various combos to your advantage by combining normal attacks and base art attacks, consider the nature of each combo to find the one, okay, right, base art with an arcane art, a more powerful attack. Okay, so this type of combo allows for stronger attacks and increases the variety of possible combos. Oh, so that's why I wasn't learning certain things, I bet. Okay. Manual mode? Cancel attacks by free run ray uh, encounters. Uh, physical ailment strategies. Personal call. Element altered art. Ice combat. Cooking shortcuts? No. Okay, so it doesn't actually tell you anything about those. Oh, wait, wait, it said Altered Arts. They had a thing for that. Uh, once set, some skills will change. Some skills will cause certain arts to change. For instance, Yuri's base art, Azer Edge, will change into Azer... Oh, it tells you. What the fuck? Azure Edge will change into Azure Storm. Oh. Huh. Well, I'm gonna do that. The scope of an ultra art is further increased when super, when the skills super chain four and super chain five are set. The scope of an altered art. Okay. It is possible to trigger a combo of base art, altered art, and arcane art. Okay. You can learn an altered art by using an attack repeatedly. Once learned, it can. Well, how do you use it if you don't fucking have it? That's like really fucking arbitrary. They have a whole section on Patty's art combat style. Yeah, I'm, I'm good on that. Patty is a little bit too complicated for me. Um, maybe in the future. Okay, so you can't pull up instructions for that sort of thing. That's really lame. Yeah, Circle doesn't seem to do anything. They just said... Wait a minute, is it because of my settings? Because I changed, hold on, no, because I changed, where is it? Uh, library, so this one. Um, right, hold on. Okay, because I changed guard to L1. When usually it's square? Is that right? Usually it's square? What's L1 then? Oh, to free run around. Oh, wait, no. L2 is to free run around. What? Switch arts. Yeah, but circle is usually normal attack. That's probably why. Maybe it goes by, like, the actual configuration when I'm actually used to normal attack, because this is the Japanese button configuration. So, if I... 
Yeah, change it to that, and then guard. I mean, I don't use guard that much. Most of the time I run around instead, so I guess that's why. So for free run... To have it on square, and then switch arts page, which was for... Guarding. And then, yeah, Fatal Strike on R2 is fine. I just, um... Okay. Maybe that's why. I don't know. That could be why. I just find it really strange you can't save on the world map. Okay, so he drops you off in the ocean. In the ocean I can't save. So wait, what if I like park the boat? Now I can save? Then I call Baul and he's just got the boat. Okay, that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense, but I'll I'll, I'll ignore it. Um, but yeah, we're out of time, guys. Um, this is the place. Um, right here. Um, I want to try this out before I go. So, arts, I'm going to change. Okay, so these are base arts. Okay, so he said Azure Edge changes to Azure Storm when the scale chain is equipped. Which I learned that, there it is, it's right there. And Hellfire, like who the fuck knows. Um, yeah, and then I have Fleck for whatever reason. Hi Sarugi, okay, so let's get into a fight. Let's see how long it actually takes. Oh wait, can I not use the Ow. Oh, immediately. Okay. Was I a little hard on you? I don't know. So is chain only for that one move? So weird to me. So, so weird to me. So, when the so do I just have backstep? Probably use item pro and L1. Oh, did they change the button to match what my configuration is? So they mean guard and back, right? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that out. Because I'm very curious about this now. So if I go into Arts, Azure Edge is still here. I did use Azure Azure Storm though. Wait, did I not get it? Oh, 
Hmm. Okay. That was a nice little break. So yeah, I didn't learn it. Even though it said learned. Okay, so put chain back on. It still says Azure Edge. So I have to use it repeatedly in order to learn it. I think that's what they mean? Oh yeah. I can still use Azure Storm, but... That's over. Okay, so I have it now, but it's not learned. Okay. Sure. So, okay, I'm going to find out what Hellfire is for. Because having these various arts... So it goes base, altered, and arcane is the last one. So you can combo those arts at the end of a combo to keep dealing damage. Oh crap, I forgot to get more shit for pudding. Son of a bitch. Well... Huh. Also, Judith is just, like, automatically in the party? I mean, I like Judith, but... She kind of doesn't have, um... Oh, wait, no, she has experience share, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. Awesome. Yeah, I want Rita back in the party. No offense, Judith. You like you're you're great. Um, but you're not Rita. Like Rita is just like sorry, I'm very happy with these four. <laughs> like I might replace Rapide with Judith, but Estelle gets a big boost with her uh, lovely dog ability, so I don't really want to do that. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna save the game. I find that very strange. Um, and instead of go instead of going on an entirely separate rant, because we're already at an hour, I want to stop the video. Um, I will just say I greatly prefer games like JRPGs in this art style. Um, essentially going for a more cartoonish, I guess, cel-shaded kind of look, rather than going for something that may look more pixelated. Nowadays, that doesn't really matter as much, considering how graphical, uh, graphics technology has, uh, changed. Um... But at the time, I'm very, I'm very glad the Tales of games were made in this presentation style because I think it's much more scalable. Um, early on, everything was sprites, uh, like Tales of Destiny on the PS1, and that looked good, but it would make it a lot harder to make uh, Tales of Destiny remasters essentially I, I I think those games are really good um, I would love if they reworked the battle system because the battle system at the time was incredibly primitive um, it was kind of the same thing you could see the shared DNA um, 
but it certainly was not nearly as good as this era, essentially. Like, Tales of Symphonia onward kind of was like a new dawn for the series. Um, and they had certain hurdles to overcome, for sure. But by the time they got to the PS3 era, Tales of was pretty much my favorite JRPG series. Um, it shifted. And it was it shifted at that point in time. Because on the PlayStation 2 and before, uh, it was always Final Fantasy for me. Uh, there were a few others. Um, and actually, I would say, never mind, no, before uh, Tales of Symphonia, because um, I believe Tales of the Abyss was first. I think. And there's also uh, Tales of Legend Legendia, but um haven't played that one. I've been, I've heard it's kind of the black sheep, uh, so I don't really know on that one, but uh, I will do Tales of the Abyss one of these days, and um, I've already done Tales of Symphonia. I'm not a huge fan of that one, but it was a huge step forward for the series. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you for stopping by, everybody. Love you guys. Uh, thank you for supporting the channel. Just stopping by and watching these videos and listening to my rants and whatever. Um, love you guys. I'm going to make sure the rest of the series is watchable in 1060 on YouTube. I'm sorry for parts 50 through 54. Uh, actually, 53? Did I fix it in 54? I don't know. I don't think I did, um, but yeah, just just a few episodes, and uh, because I had to know, and um, that's pretty much it. I got some stuff I got to go do. Have a beautiful day. Many blessings on your journey, and until next time. Who's a good boy? Repeat. Yes, you are. Yes, you're a good boy. <laughs> bye bye now, everybody. <laughs>